National Cattlemen's Beef Association, or the NCBA, and I just wrote up a little something that was pretty critical of them, and I've been critical of them in the past, and I thought I would just kind of explain why I think that organization pretty much sucks at what they do as far as representing U.S. cattle producers. And so who they are, it's just an organization, an industry organization that's supposed to represent what they would call all aspects of beef production, meaning all segments of cattle production and and the beef packers. And so where when I started doing this looking into different issues in agriculture and the cattle industry, it was about it was less than three years ago. And when I first started, I, did, I had no opinion of NCBA and I didn't belong to any associations and I didn't know who NCBA really was or how they operated. And so I come into it and, and the one thing, the first issue I started looking at was when Tyson Foods and Cargill, which are two of the main four beef packers that I always talk about, that are kind of control the market and they, uh, those four packers can control 85% of all beef production in the U.S. And Tyson Foods and Cargill invested in these fake meat companies. And in those meat companies, um, mission statements and, and set goals was to end U.S. cattle production. Their goals were to destroy the U.S. cattle industry. Um, and they were run by animal rights nuts. And when that happened, they got there was no criticism at all from agriculture media or the NCBA. And at that time, you know, that was really kind of the first thing I was looking into. And, and I definitely criticized the people in agriculture media that are supposed to be informing cattle ranchers and, and farmers. But I didn't really talk about the NCBA much just because I didn't really know how they operated or, or who they were still. And what really opened my eyes was the Holcomb beef plant fire. And it, it opened a lot of people's eyes because when that happened, and what that was was just a really ex an excuse for beef packers to tank the market. And what they would say is that they weren't able to process as many cattle. That's what they said at the time because of that uh, packing plant fire. But when the when all the reports came out, it showed that they were able to process more cattle after that week. And the reason they did more is because they tanked the cattle price. They run up the price, the beef price on the consumer. And, and stretch those margins out and process as much beef as they could. And after that, after those reports came out and all of that became clear, prices did not go up and they continued to not go up. You know, cattle price stayed depressed for months afterwards. And, and NCBA came out and made every excuse they could, talking about how the market's complicated. This is how the market works. It just takes some time. You just got to be patient. You know, while you lose money and the beef packers make it hand over fist. And so after that, you know, a lot of people's eyes were opened. And then going into COVID, uh, after that first run on the run on the grocery stores where they cleared out all the beef shelves and, and demand for beef had never been higher. There hadn't been a single packing plant shutdown. Nobody had even talked about packing plant shutdown or, or that there would be any problem in the supply chain. And the cattle price tanked for absolutely no reason. And so when that happened, NCBA goes to the government because they are a lobbyist organization. They got guys in D.C. who are constantly protecting beef packers is really their main job. Um, but this, at this time, they wanted to go and, and get a bailout for cattle producers because the cattle price tanked. But they refused to say anything about the margins the beef packers were making. And um, so the NCBA guy goes on to CNBC and the anchor there who had probably never looked at the cattle market, but anyone with any brains could see that the beef demand was through the higher than it's ever been. You know, they couldn't even keep it on the shelves. And he, he asked the obvious question, why do cattle producers need a bailout check when beef demands at its height? And NCBA says, well, you know, the market's complicated and all this other BS, just your typical BS line, same thing that they said after Holcomb. Um, and just would not, they refuse to criticize the beef packers or, or how they operate. And then you go into what happened this summer. Um, and what cattle producers were able to do this summer is simply just, and, and other industry organizations was just kind of go over the head of the NCBA and go straight to the senators 
because the NCBA doesn't want to criticize beef packers at all, but the market is obviously being manipulated. Beef packers are, the, there's just way too much concentration in the beef packing sector because there's mainly just four companies running it all. And so this summer, there's been two Senate hearings looking into the, just that, beef packer concentration, market manipulation. And in the first hearing, NCBA guy gets out there and says everything's just working exactly as it should be. You know, it's it's all great and everything in these alternative marketing agreements are, are working just how they should and which are confidential marketing agreements that these big packers or, or these big feed yards have with beef packers. And what those do is pretty much screw the little guy. And and so looking at him, that guy, the NCBA guy that came out and, and said that, his name is Mark Gardner. And if you look into him, he is a big cattle rancher in Kansas. But he is also chairman of the board of a company that owns 15% of one of the major beef packers. So more than likely, he is seeing a lot of profits from these massive margins that beef packers are making. And they put him out there like he's just another rancher, sticking up for, for cattle ranchers and, and telling these senators what cattle ranchers think. Um, and if you look further into that company that he's chairman of the board in and how he's profiting from beef packers, you'll find that the secretary, <clears throat> the secretary of that board is the president of the NCBA. And so the president of the board of NCBA is more than likely profiting from these massive beef packer margins that they've been making over the past few months and that have and that the Senate is now investigating or the Department of Justice and yeah and the Senate um and so it, all of that kind of just it just keeps piling up and piling up as evidence as to how much this organization just is ass backwards and then you come out last week was their big cattle convention they call cattle con which is the most appropriately named convention um <clears throat> and they come out of that and their main takeaway after all of this talk about you know market manipulation depressed cattle prices uh, all summer long in the senate and in different areas and their main takeaway out of their cattlemen's convention is that they want to reach climate neutrality for the beef industry by the year 2040 and that to me is the most tone deaf and stupid thing that they ever, I mean, out of all of it, it just seems so obvious. They want to change this whole narrative of, of all this news around the cattle industry. And now they play right into the CEO of NCBA goes on Fox News and talks about how cattle belches are bad. And they're, we're going to do everything we can to improve the cattle's impact on the climate. Which really is, that is just taking an animal rights wacko's <clears throat> narrative that they came up with and just making it their own and just trying to change the subject to get the heat off of beef, pa beef packers. And it is just so mind-numbingly tone-deaf and stupid that I can't even wrap my head around it. And so I wrote something up about that. And then, and so if, if you're watching this and you're, not familiar with the industry you got to be thinking like how in the hell does this organization you know continue to be funded and um and even exist anymore and the, really the answer a lot of that is you know and they do still have cattle ranchers who you know they pay their dues and they go down to the convention and they're you know everybody wants to be a big swing and dick cattleman and so <clears throat> they belong to this organization but mainly because they're never informed. Ag media does not, all of this stuff that I just said has never been reported in any cattle industry um, media or magazine or TV shows or any of that stuff. They just never talk about it. They will not criticize NCBA. And the reason, I feel like the reason that that probably is, is because NCBA has a stranglehold on the beef checkoff. And the beef checkoff, is a just a massive amount of money the beef check off every time cattle sale there's a dollar per head that goes into the beef check off and last year it was like over 80 million 80 some million dollars and that ncba pretty much controls how that's distributed they gave themselves over 65 and a half or 68 and a half million dollars last year 
and then the rest of it goes to other organizations that do the same stuff, mostly um, just, you know, this North American Meat Alliance that, that came out with their press release saying that it, the market's working exactly as it should. Um, there's a there's a organization that imports, their, they lobby the government to import more meat all the time from other countries. They get beef checkoff dollars. And so the way that that, and so the NCBA really just kind of has the industry held hostage um, because of that beef checkoff and the stranglehold they have on that. And that makes, that ends up a lot of cattle ranchers and people in cattle production just don't know any of the stuff that I just talked about because ag media won't talk about it because, you know, my feeling is there's so much money that the ag media is getting this beef checkoff money too and they don't want to make NCBA mad. And so the only way to really get rid of or to change how the beef checkoff operates because of the way it was set up, the only way to change it is to have a vote, to get re a referendum vote, whether you want to keep the beef check off or get rid of it. There's no way of changing it, no other way of changing it. And so what's going on now, and if you've been paying attention, you've probably heard about a petition. There's a petition. The only person that can ask for that vote is the Secretary of Agriculture. And so there's a petition to get Tom Belsack, Secretary of Agriculture, to ask for a referendum vote. And everybody I have talked to or that I know of that is for this referendum vote and for, you know, getting rid of the checkoff, they all want to continue the checkoff. But the only way to change it is to get rid of it and rebuild it from the ground up. And so that is what this petition's about that, you know, I've talked about on other videos and a lot of other people have tried to get more and more people to, to sign up for. But it's been difficult, especially this year with their you know, no, there hasn't been any conventions or any of that stuff until now. The, the state fairs, the stock shows, none of that stuff happened last summer. And so really what needs to happen is the cattlemen need to start being more informed by actual people that want to, that can criticize NCBA because that just doesn't happen anymore. And, and so hopefully this petition gets through and that's pretty much where my opinion comes from so far on NCBA.